Somebody needs to pay for all my children. Somebody needs to be held accountable, and they need to pay. Hey, everybody. It's early in the morning, and someone sent me a most excellent article on the old Facebook. And I said, hey, let's give this a reading, hey? Cuckolding, the sex fetish for intellectuals. <laughs> Only smart dudes let their wife get porked by other guys. You want to be smart? Oh, you don't let your wife get fucked by other dudes? You're an idiot. All right, let's get started. This is by Annalie Rufus. Hey, when it comes to knowing whatever, what, what all the smart folks are doing, you got to listen to Annalie Rufus. <laughs> Annalie Rufus knows everything. I mean, her last name is Rufus. All right. When he hears his wife moan with pleasure while she has sex with another man, Paul Pines feels bad. Then good. Paul Pines needs some help. Paul Pines. You think that's a real name? That sounds like a made-up name to me. When Paul's wife tells him that the other man is much better at sex than he ever was, Paul feels worse than better. <laughs> But of course he does. He arranged this encounter in which he watches in agony as his wife makes love to another guy. And almost as soon as it's over, he'll start planning the next one. Paul Pines needs a hobby. Paul Pines needs to collect stamps or maybe get into model trains. <laughs> Dang it. Cuckoldry is designed... Is is defined as a wife's infidelity. Chaucer and Shakespeare characterized it as the ultimate shame. So perhaps it's no surprise that today it's developed into a very popular... F what? <laughs> wait, wait. It's the ultimate shame. So perhaps it's no surprise that today it's developed into a fairly popular fetish. This bitch is doing brain tricks on me, man. That don't even make sense. If it's the ultimate shame, why is it no surprise that it's popular? The internet is rife with husbands enthusiastically soliciting other men, often larger, hotter, sexier men than themselves, to have sex while their wives or have sex with their wives while they watch. Can you imagine Paul watching his bitch getting plowed right while he's sitting in the corner looking smug with a graduation hat on? <laughs> Well, it is the thinking man's fetish. <laughs> oh, I love this shit, man. The high point of cuckolding is when your wife says she wants the other guy all the time and never wants you. <laughs> That's good. That's for the thinking man. This isn't like swinging, and it's not a threesome. Cuckolded men, a.k.a. cucks, only observe their wives' infidelity. They don't participate, and that's why they find it a turn-on. They're left out, looking on as the woman they love climaxes with a better man than them. <laughs> Damn, this is brutal. Who would read this? It's a form of psychological sadomasochism. Some people get turned on by whips, chains, and physical pain. Cucks get aroused by mental anguish. Well, I must be a cuck then, because I'm reading this and it's it's anguish. It's mental anguish. I'm not a cuck. I'm all men. How dare you? You should be ashamed of yourself. Cuckolding is rapidly emerging as the alt sex fetish of choice for American intellectuals. <laughs> you know, anytime like these articles or the news, they say, hey, this group of people is smarter than this group of people. Stay away from the alleged smart group because they're trying to trick you. I know I shouldn't have to explain this, but there might be one little guy out there who doesn't get it yet. Don't be a thinking man, according to this article. <laughs> Cuckoldry, cuckolding is rapidly emerging as the alt sex fetish. Oh, yeah, blah, blah, blah. Just check out the online forums like ourhotwives.org. Yeah, I wonder who posts there. Where letter... Perfect postings celebrate cuckoldry as a cerebral pursuit. 
<laughs> I don't know, man. I I would find those posts highly suspect. Transcending ordinary voyeurism and S and M as a dangerous game involving je jealousy, misery, gratitude, shame, sharing, sublimation, lust, and trust. Sounds like this lady is trying to trick you into something, doesn't it? Doesn't it sound like she's trying to sell you a used car? I don't trust this Rufus. Once a month, DRS Paul and Sally Pines, a pair of, what does DRS mean? Someone help. DRS Paul and Sally Pines, a pair of New York City area PhDs. Oh, <laughs> you don't, a commoner wouldn't enjoy the sight of his wife getting power porked by another man. <laughs> Who have been married 25 years, check into a hotel suite with another man. As Paul looks on, graduation hat on head, Sally and the man snuggle up together on the couch like lovebirds. Can you imagine? You know, you know this bitch is married, but you're just trying to get some on the side, and there's some wiener with a graduation hat in the corner staring at you. <laughs> How can this be fun for anybody? For anybody? Soon their clothes are off, and before long, she's wailing in ecstasy as the man has passive aggressive. As the man has aggressive path in it, sex with her. Paul, helpless, can only watch and suffer. <laughs> Afterward, Paul serves lunch to his wife and the man in the sweet stocking area. <laughs> oh, Lord. They eat in the nude before launching it to another long, sweaty session. For Paul, this sort of suffering feels like heaven. Imagine looking at the guy who's about to go to bed with your life, wife. Imagine hearing the man crying out in bed with your wife. Ooh, says Paul, who pleasures himself, quote unquote, like a madman during these encounters. So great, you got a guy in the corner staring at you, jerking off with a graduation hat on. The high point of cuckolding is when your wife says she wants the other guy all the time and never wants you. <laughs> Sally's body makes it very clear that this is true. It hurts me worse to know this, so it's better to know. What? Worst, best of all, is watching Sally bond with the other man, not only physically, but emotionally. When, as Paul puts it, she's masturbating him with her mind. <laughs> What is this? This is some creepy shit, man. This is getting weird. The emotional bond that women form with the third party is a topic of excited discussion on cuckolding forums. One member of our hotwives.org forum admits being more afraid of Susan going for a walk to the ice cream store with a lover than her having three different men in a week. I don't know. Who cares? Creeps. Fucking creeps. If he just fucks her and goes home, that's one thing, Paul says. But if they fuck for an hour, then have an intellectual relationship where they sit and talk for two hours afterwards, it hurts a lot more. In this respect, cuckolding attracts the very highly educated. You see how they fool you? Hey, only someone really smart would get into this. Not a dummy. Not you. You're smart. Go let your wife get fucking power porked. Paul says adding that it's truly intellectual and it's enterprise because it replaces sexual touch with humiliation and emotional pain, both of which are psychological. Most of what gives me physical pleasure has to go on in my brain. I'm totally being classist, but this isn't like people in redneck bars asking each other, you want to fuck my wife? It's much more complex. It's pleasure on a different level. Sure it is, dude. Keep telling yourself. Keep telling yourself you're better than some imaginary hillbilly you made up in your mind. Keep telling yourself. Hey, at least I'm not that made up guy that doesn't even exist. <laughs> you're much better and much more intelligent than made up hillbilly guy. 
when after years of pleading, he finally convinced Sally, whom he describes as dignified and proper to cuckold him. <laughs> Paul posted a notice on Adult Friend Finder that began seeking an intelligent man to be my wife's lover. He picked the four smartest candidates. That was 12 years ago. Watching Sally having sex with another man, I realized how bad I am at it. And this is really hard for me to say. At this point, vo his voice cracks. Man, I get all fun in <laughs> The good shit, man. Nothing but the good shit for my subscribers out there. This is high quality content. Although he doesn't know precisely why he's wired this way, I know why, because he's a cocksucker. He likes staring at other guys' wieners. He just doesn't want to admit it. I've told all my therapists I'm happy to talk with them about this as long as they promise they won't try to cure me. Paul remembers walking in on his parents once when he was too young to realize what they were doing in bed. They said, get out, and I knew it was something very exciting. So Paul is really sick. <laughs> <laughs> Paul is very sick. And that when it's going on, Paul belongs outside. That my place should always be outside of it, which is a really cool place to be. <laughs> Keep telling yourself that, Paul. Keep telling yourself that. For other cuckolds, <laughs> for other cuckolds, pain isn't the point. Some are closeted husbands who want to see naked men, whether they admit it or not. Others like the idea of their wives attracting other guys. Competition gets them hard, says sex therapist Susan Block. All right, first of all, why would you ever trust a woman? And second of all, why would you ever trust a sex therapist? You see, two, it's like double wrong. Double wrong, don't do it. They try to trick you, man. Who operates a phone therapy program, especially for cuckolds, to fine tune their fantasies and strategies. You see what I mean? Poisoning minds. There are so many forms of substitute competition among men in our society, such as sports, that take the place of real competition inside a woman's body. <laughs> you can get inside a woman's body for 20 bucks. Don't pretend that shit's amazing. Shut up, Susan Block, you dope. In which rival male sperm engage in wars to fertilize her eggs. <laughs> Lordy. What a mess. It just keeps getting worse. Winning isn't even that important. What's important for a man in terms of his arousal is the competition. If you're a married man, you might love your wife. But you won't get as strong an erection for her or have as strong an ejaculation if your testicles know that this woman is you so low. <laughs> See, this is totally woman sex therapist talk. It's totally goofy. Nature is conservative, so your testicles won't work any harder <laughs> than they, they know they have to. Also, oh, testicles have brains now. Testicles just know stuff. Testicles, what should I eat for breakfast today? Oh, I had that yesterday. Fucking testicles. Predictable testicles. <laughs> but if your wife has been away at a conference, then there's a chance that she's had sex with another man. <laughs> You'll get a stronger erection when she comes home. If she has had sex with another man, that makes you really hard. When your wife fucks all their guys, that makes you really hard. I just picture her, you know, swinging the little pendulum in front of your eyeballs, trying to hypnotize you. Turning this dynamic into reality through cuckling is a mental workout because it involves getting your mind past the jealousy. Past that toucher and I'll blow your head off reflexes. Oh, you mean that's normal and healthy? That normal, healthy reflex. Hey, if you could just get rid of that normal and healthy reflex, you'll be a thinking man like Paul Pines. Jealousy, block, jealousy, block theorizes is a social construct based on the notion that husbands own their wives and is thus much more recent evolutionary speaking than the competition that turns guys on. That's why it's mostly intellectuals are decuckling. <laughs> Because other guys are crippled by jealousy. They're aroused and upset and don't know why. 
What a mess. What a fucking mess. Alright, this is getting long, dude. I don't want to read this all day. Let's skip a couple paragraphs because it's just fucking ridiculous. It harks back to the notion of the forbidden, says Paul, who doesn't pursue the fetish within a fetish himself. And to that monstrous old stereotype in which all black men have two foot cocks. For Paul, it's enough that the guy makes him feel pathetic. <laughs> But he warns that the emotional scarring isn't for everyone. You're playing with fire, he says. Don't do this unless you understand that you can't take it back. Even if you never do it again, your wife will have always had that great time. And you'll both know. <laughs> oh, we're done anyway. Annalie Rufus is the author of many books. Okay, let's see. Let's see the books she's put out, including Party of One, The, Lovers Manif or the Loner's Manifesto. Okay, that's probably a bad influence, that book. And the Nautilus. Oh, the Nautilus award-winning stuck. <laughs> Why we don't or won't move on. That probably is a bad influence. And the co-author of still more, including Weird Europe. And the Scavengers made it. <laughs> Whatever, who gives a shit? This bitch sucks. But anyway, guys, don't be an idiot. Don't let these articles tell you, hey, be smart and do this stupid thing. They do that shit all the time. Don't be a rube. No one wants to be a rube. And if you listen to this shit, you're not, not only are you a rube, you're king rube. Well, I'll see you later or some shit.